This is $10,000. And I'm going to tell you how I burned it all before I turned 21. My name is Hafu Go, and I'm here to help you learn from my worst money mistakes. The first one is becoming a hype beast. That's like literally burning your money. The number one biggest mistake I've made in my 20s is trying. Oh no, trying to become a hype beast. <laughs> Oh my god, did not expect that to happen. I was looking back on my monthly expenses over the past two years while I was in college and let me tell you, shopping was the single biggest expense I had and out of shopping, clothing took up most of it. And this didn't even track my cash purchases. So, you know, I probably spent close to like 5,000 to seven thousand dollars just on clothes in the past four years that's a lot of money so for those of you who don't know what a hype beast is let me tell you a hype beast is a kid that collects clothing shoes and accessories for the sole purpose of impressing others although the individual may not have a dime to their name they like to front like they are making far more than everybody else i was trying to buy the latest drops you know get the supreme get the babe get the easies just because i wanted to look cool the funny thing let me tell you bros you think girls appreciate hypebeasts nah it's all other dudes who appreciate hypebeasts so if you're dressing to impress the girls that's not the way to go. I don't mind if those of you who buy sneakers to flip and you get money from that. I love that hustle. I'm talking about the people who just consume, who just buy, which was me, of course. These are all like premium jackets and shorts, pants, everything. But I don't wear anymore. They're all going to waste. I just wear this all day. I just wear black t-shirts every single day now. I always tell myself, next drop I'm never gonna buy, but the reality is the drops will never stop and the only thing that's gonna disappear is the money in your wallet. So you should focus your attention and your money on researching how to avoid mistake number two. Rushing into investments that you don't understand. I lost $3,300 in the past two years by investing in a dividend stock that my friend suggested I invest in. But when I invested in it, I had no prior research. I was like, you know what? He said it was safe. I was like, okay, I trust you. And I slid $5,000 into that investment. I had some money saved up, right? I was like, if, if this is a safe investment, I'm just going to put it in and just let it grow throughout the year well the reality is over the last two years i lost let's see 64.78 percent of my portfolio value i didn't sell yet if i just wait a little bit i can probably get back maybe like 50 percent. so basically i lost three thousand something dollars and i also lost another thousand dollars on bitcoin that one funny story the bitcoin was doing okay but the thing is the exchange where i was trading the bitcoin they went bankrupt so i was never able to get my money out lost one thousand dollars right there honestly the real reason i invested is because i had fomo the fear of missing out and this is huge i think it's such a big thing right now especially when you are in your 20s and everyone else is telling you how they're making like $10,000 a day doing Shopify dropshipping. I'm not telling you to not invest, okay? But I'm telling you, when you invest your money into something, you should have full knowledge of exactly what you're getting into and how you're gonna get money and how you might even lose money. So right now, even though I have money saved up, I'm holding back on investing in stocks. Instead, I'm just investing back into my own business because that's what I know. That's how I made my money. And for now, that's what's gonna keep making me money. It really breaks my heart that I wasted over $5,000. 
Each like equals one dollar in my mind. So can we get five thousand likes to uh, end my despair? <laughs> and if you're wondering how you can get that initial capital to invest, well, my biggest money mistake number three is not applying for scholarships, which is essentially free money. Wow. So I went to a four year college degree at UBC in Canada and there were so many scholarship opportunities that I missed out on. For the first two years, I didn't even apply to a single one. And my friend told me the other day that she was getting like $3,000 every single year in scholarship money. That's literally free money. They're just handing it to you. There's no loans. You don't need to pay it back. There's no interest on it. Free money. That's how you get the capital to invest. But in my third year, I got a little bit smarter and thank me for doing that because when I went on exchange to China, to Tsinghua University, I was able to get a huge scholarship. The scholarship covered all of my living costs, so my dormitory was free, and additionally, I was getting a $600 per month allowance. So that added up to around $3,000 for one semester of exchange. $3,000 in China is a huge sum of money. So I think the main reason why we don't apply for scholarships is one, we don't know about it. So go onto your school website or go to your counselor and research about it. And then two is we're afraid that we're not going to get it. Well, let me tell you, scholarship is literally a game of numbers. You just write a couple essays. Most of them have the same type of essays and you just submit like hundreds of scholarship applications. It will be worth it. Trust me. Okay. Scholarships might be free money, but you know what's not free money, but often is mistaken for that? Your credit card. The biggest money mistake number four is using your credit card as if it's free money. Credit card debt is one of the hardest things to get out of because it's so expensive. Credit card debt averages around 20% interest rate. That's insane. What can you invest in that can reliably generate you 20% every single year? Not a lot. So if you're able to pay down your credit card debt, do it now. Do it now. Let's say you had $5,000 in credit card debt. You don't pay it back for a year. You owe another thousand and next year, you owe $6,000 and your interest is on the $6,000 instead of the initial $5,000. That's insane. So I didn't grow up in Canada or the US. I grew up in China. Credit cards went such a big thing in China. People were just mainly using cash when I was there and now they use mobile payment, both of which are money that they own and have earned already. So they're very conscious about spending it. And I'm so grateful that when I got my first credit card in Canada, my parents told me, spend your credit card like it's a debit card, meaning only spend money that you have. That's such a small advice. I listened to them and I'm so thankful that I listened to them because I have zero credit card debt. And lastly, the worst money mistake, mistake number five, is not keeping track of your finances. There's two parts to this. One, spending more money than you make every single month. And number two is not saving your money. Well, if you're spending it all, you can't really save it, right? So as I was saying earlier, I was spending a lot of money on clothes when I was in college and I was only making like $1,000 a month. Any time I really bought clothes, it was eating into my savings because my living expenses were around like 600 to like 700 every single month for food and stuff, not counting rent. And keeping track of your finances doesn't have to be hard because there's like automated programs nowadays. Even your bank should have it. Apple has it. Apple Wallet has it. Uh, Mint.com has it, which is what I've used. 
all these things, you literally just don't need to do anything. You just type in your banking information and it collects it automatically and it spits you out a pie chart and you can see where your money is going to. One of the reasons why we don't want to keep track of our finances is because we are maybe scared, I would say. Like I was a little bit scared to check how much money I was spending. So I was literally avoiding opening my bank account. So if it, I don't see it, it doesn't exist, right? Well, that's not right, at least for your finances. You know what is right? If you don't see your money, it doesn't exist. That's correct. Um, <laughs> we can't be emotional with money because that's how the biggest money mistakes start. Let me know in the comments below which of these five mistakes you've made and maybe some tips you have for yourself as well. My name is Hafugo, dare to dream, and click here to watch the five things I wish I knew at 20 years old. Those are some pretty crucial lessons I had to learn the hard way. For those of you who stuck until the end, prop money, prop money, don't get mad, it's prop money.